There's a lot about Glover Teixeira that you don't know. It's not just his resilience in the UFC. It's the heartbreaking story that changed his life forever. Teixeira has always wanted more for himself. He started putting in the work early on in his life. After taking him nearly 10 years to get to the UFC, he got a shot at the UFC light heavyweight title but lost the fight. Everyone thought that would be the last time we'd see Teixeira compete because of his age. But he defied the odds to make a historic comeback and claim the title. The journey to the top was very rough, and no one really knows how rough it was for Teixeira. This might be one of the most soul-touching videos we've ever done, because it's a story about hope, being relentless, and never giving up. Join us as we walk through the life of one of UFC's strongest fighters by heart, Glover Teixeira, and see how much he earned for never losing sight of UFC gold. Glover Teixeira was born in the rural area of Sobralia, Minas Gerais, Brazil on the 28th of October 1979. It was hard for Teixeira right from the start because the community where he grew up was underdeveloped. They had no electricity and lacked other basic amenities. According to Teixeira himself, it was really hard to grow up there. Like getting a decently paying job was almost impossible, much less getting rich. Another interesting thing about Teixeira while he was growing up was his passion for boxing. The passion for boxing didn't come naturally. It was after Teixeira watched a series of Mike Tyson fights and some other great MMA fighters like Royce Grassi and Chuck Liddell that he saw himself wanting to follow the path of combat sports. The first step was to leave Sobralia, Brazil for the United States. He had no money and definitely no passport, so he had to put his life in danger to get to the US. Man, if I have to be honest with you, this was utter madness from Teixeira. At the age of 19, he embarked on a journey to illegally migrate to the US through its southwest border. He went through a series of countries to get his passport, and then went through Mexico before he entered the US. It's such a dangerous journey that hundreds of people died every year doing it. It takes about 40 to 45 days to get to the US, and there's little food or shelter on the way. This man had been through a lot in his life, and while he thought getting to the US would magically solve his problems, it really didn't. On getting to the US, Tejera and other immigrants had no money to pay the people who guided them on the journey, so they all got held at gunpoint in a house in San Diego. After about 12 days, one of the immigrants had someone come bail them out and Tejera immediately fled for Danbury in Connecticut. This was in the year of 1999. You don't see many MMA or UFC fighters go through such hard times as Tejera did. But what became fascinating was how this experience impacted his life moving forward. We all love America. I know for a fact that I do, and so did Tejera once he got in. After working tirelessly to get a good amount of money, he decided to chase his childhood dream by enlisting in a local boxing gym. However, Tejera had a friend who was looking out for his success. This guy advised Tejera to go practice jiu-jitsu and join the UFC instead of pursuing a path in boxing. In typical fashion, this guy bought tapes of UFC 1, 2 and 3 for Tejera to watch and see for himself how awesome the UFC is. I've got to say, this friend of Tejera's was one guy with pretty good convincing skills because Tejera immediately bought the idea of joining the UFC. He left the boxing gym and immediately started training in the MMA. Tejera horribly lost his first pro fight in MMA and got adopted under the wings of legendary John Hackleman to train in the pit gym. It was about this time that Tejera met his beautiful wife Ingrid and got married to her after dating for two years. After months of training and engaging in some MMA fights, it was time for Tejera to go international. In 2006, Tejera made his major break into the world of combat sports when he faced Thierry Sukaju at WEC 42. This is where things got juicy. Tejera annihilated Sukaju in the first two minutes of the first round, and luckily for Tejera, there was a special guest in the crowd that day. Oh yeah, it was the UFC president himself, Dana White. For you to understand why a person like Dana White was present that night, it's because Sukaju was no small fighter and brought a lot of attention. This guy took out OGs in MMA like a piece of cake. So for Tejera to knock him out so easily, it showed the talent he possessed. After so many coaches and pundits advised Dana to bring Tejera to the UFC, Dana approached Tejera himself. The outcome of that meeting was simple. Tejera couldn't fight in the UFC or any major fighting promotion because he was an illegal immigrant. Tejera must have been the most frustrated man on the planet after hearing that news. He had to return to Brazil to work on getting his papers legally before he could return to the US. He returned to Brazil, applied for a legal visa, but he got denied. Tejera felt like he was in hell. He had the skill, the opportunity, and the zeal to achieve his dreams, but he just couldn't. All he could do was sit on the sidelines and watch until the miracle happened. Before we go there, kindly scroll down, hit that like button, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our awesome videos. Tejera's wife Ingrid wrote a letter to Senator of Connecticut named Chris Murphy to help the situation. Chris immediately responded by issuing a visa to Tejera just three days later. From there, it was game on for Tejera. 
Returning to the US at the age of 32, he signed for the USC and had his first fight against Kyle Kingsbury. Tejera battered Kyle to a pulp. He won the fight in the first round by choking Kyle till he tapped out. Tejera then went on to win four more fights in a row within the space of 11 months. After getting himself a 20-fight win streak in 2014, Tejera was finally the number one contender for the UFC Light Heavyweight Championship. All he had to do was defeat the boogeyman, John Jones. Boy, oh boy, would that be tough. The boogeyman at the time was champion for over three years with six title defenses and was just 26 years old. He tore Tejera apart during the fight, beating him black and blue. The battering was so hard, Jones kept knocking out Tejera's mouth guard during the fight. He also injured Tejera's shoulder, and you know what? Let's just say that Tejera got beat up like a little kid that day. Obviously, Jones won the fight by unanimous decision, leaving Tejera with his first loss since 2005. Tejera went on another three-fight win streak on his quest to climb back up for another title shot. His next match, however, would be against one of the most lethal KO artists known to mankind, Anthony Rumble Johnson. Rumble is a beast, and he showed Tejera just how beastly he can be by finishing him in just 13 seconds of the first round. That was brutal and humiliating. However, Tejera has been through a lot in his life, and there's one thing we've learned in this video is that Tejera never gives up. At 39 years old, he began a five-fight win streak before finally calling out Dana White and the UFC to grant him a title shot just one more time. And it happened. Tejera was slated to fight Jan Blachowicz at the UFC Light Heavyweight Championship at UFC 267 back in September 2021. Jan struck with leg kicks and jabs until Tejera grabbed Jan, shot for a high crotch and took him down. The second round saw Tejera throw his own strikes at Jan, and finally a rear naked choke that gave him the victory. At 42, Glover Tejera finally claimed the UFC Light Heavyweight Championship he'd wanted for over 20 years. This made him the oldest fighter to capture a title for the first time in the UFC. Here's a simple question for you. After all those years, how much money do you think Tejera amassed for himself? Before we tell you if you're right, here's something you should know. If you're a new subscriber to our channel, go comment I subbed in the comments section below and stand a chance to win our monthly shout out. We appreciate every new subscriber to our channel, and this is our way of saying thank you, so go comment I subbed right away. Glover Tejera has had so many ups and downs in his UFC career, so I can say this guy earns between 100,000 and 200,000 whenever he wins or loses in any fight. He signed to Reebok and Icon Meals on endorsement deals. These brands pay bonuses when he wins a fight. He also owns a gym in Connecticut where he trains the younger fighters. His biggest payout was actually when he beat Jan Blakovic and earned at least 432,000 from that fight. He has a net worth of approximately 8 million US dollars. For Tejera, it's never been about the money, but about his resilience. After waiting almost seven years between his second and third title shot, Tejera stayed focused and got the job done. At this point, all I can say is thank you to Tejera for not giving up and also giving your fans hope to believe in you. Sadly, Tejera might retire in 2022. His life has been an amazing story that will surely make a movie one day. Till then, we always appreciate Glover Tejera and his incredible journey in the UFC. Thanks for staying with us till the end. We hope to see you in the next one. Bye for now.